Hey, what's up? This is Richard from BlenderGrid.com with a tutorial about how to use FZ Randomizer to create a collection of unique characters with various traits and how to automate that and how to render them out as a large collection of JPEGs or PNGs. Um, now, I have done this tutorial before using um, a Suzanne with different hats and different glasses. Um, the point of that previous tutorial was to show you how to do this without any external uh, tools, without any scripts or add-ons, just vanilla Blender. And the way we managed it is was um, by using the timeline and using drivers to turn certain traits on and off and very, um, you know, vary the the final result like that. Now it could be a little bit tedious to set this up using those drivers. So in this tutorial, I want to show you how to use an, uh, a Blender add-on called FC Randomizer to kind of automate this. And I thought it would be cool to use this, the exact same starting point, the exact same project with Suzanne again and the hats and the glasses and show you how to modify this to use FZ Randomizer properly and create a timeline of variations that you can then render on your own computer or even on Blender Grid. So let's check it out. This is our starting point. And if we select any object, we can uh, look at the object data properties. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and then scroll all the way down. And there is our FZ randomizer panel, um, which shows up if you have installed this. And I assume you do because um, the creator of FZ randomizer, Logan, has his own YouTube channel where he shows you uh, how to use the add on and how to install it and stuff like that. So. I'm not going to cover that. I'm just going to cover how to adapt this project to use FC Randomizer and to um, kind of show the workflow of uh, uh, preparing the project and then going ahead and rendering it. All right. So first thing I want to do is to um, focus on only our character, which is Suzanne and the hats and the glasses. So I'm going to turn off the visibility of our render uh, folder here or in Blender these folders are called collections. I'm going to turn off the render collection uh, or just hide it. And uh, here we have uh, Suzanne. So the first thing you have to do in uh, to, to use FZ Randomizer is to use one root folder or one root collection here in Blender that includes all your different collections with the traits and the, the, the variations within those. Um, and in our case, we have the avatar, the hats and the glasses directly in our scene collection. So what I want to do is create a sub collection uh, by hitting this little button and calling it character. And you can call this anything you, you like, but you have to make sure that it matches this host name. Uh, and I think character is a good Def default name, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to select my avatar, my hats and my glasses and drag them inside of that. So now we have this main folder, main collection with our avatar, our hats and our glasses. And then within those, we have the different variations um, that we have for each trait. Okay. And what we can do now is we can calculate how many possibilities there are in our um, in our collection and you can see six. Now, if you remember the previous tutorial, there were 75. So why is it only six? Uh, the way this works is it's going to take character. It's going to look inside character and look for all the traits. Uh, avatar is a trait, hats is a trait and glasses is a trait. And then within those, it's going to check which objects are inside of those directly uh, under the uh, under the collection. And in this case, Avatar only has one object, so that, that doesn't really add any variation. We can only choose this one. That's really only one. Then in hats, we have three objects and another collection of the cap, which is uh, th the reason we have this inside its own collection is because it has multiple, uh, pro uh, multiple sub objects. Uh, but in this case, it only counts the actual object. So here it only counts three. And then in the glasses, it only counts two. So that's three 
times two and actually times one, but that, that doesn't really change anything. So it's one times three times two and that equals six. So that's how that works. So in order to make this work, let's start with the avatar, Suzanne. Now, what we were changing in uh, the previous tutorial was only the material of Suzanne. And we did that using uh, geometry nodes. Now, FZ Randomizer simply works by taking uh, the objects under your collection. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just make duplicates of Suzanne and I'm gonna make it a little bit efficient by using the same mesh data, but making duplicate objects and then every object has a different material. And that's the way I wanna do it. There is actually a more fancy way to do it with FZ Randomizer where you can actually randomize the material. Um, but I think this is a little bit simpler to understand. So let's take Suzanne and look at what material this one has. And if you remember, uh, it we added the materials all into the same uh, object, pretty much. But what I want to do now is create different variations of Suzanne. So this first one is going to be Suzanne car paint. Uh, and that's a blue material. So, okay. The way you can do this is by duplicating the project. The normal, uh, sorry, duplicating the, the object. The normal way of duplicating an object is uh, shift D, which does this, and that creates uh, a duplicate uh, .001. But if you look inside the uh, mesh data, it also duplicates the mesh. Now in this case, it's only Suzanne, so that's not a, not a very heavy mesh. But if you have a very complicated um, object, a very complicated mesh, you might wanna just reuse that mesh data because that doesn't really change. Uh, to make things more efficient. So I'm gonna remove this uh, duplicate and I'm gonna duplicate again, but instead of Shift D, I'm gonna use Alt D or Option D. And that does the same thing, but now um, we have a second object, .001, but now you can see the mesh data is staying the same between those two. And you can also see we have two users of this mesh data and those users are these two objects. Um, so now we, we're not duplicating the mesh. So that's a little bit more efficient. I'm gonna Alt G to, um, oh, actually let's remove that and just duplicate it with Alt D and then hit escape to uh, reset uh, the position back to the same. Um, what we actually wanna do as well, uh, because now we're using the same mesh data, this is what the uh, normally the material is assigned to. The material is assigned to the mesh and you can see that over here. Uh, it's assigned to the data. Instead of that, we wanna assign it to the object. And then you can see this slot will reset. So we have to, um, oh, sorry, we don't have to create a new material. We can choose the car paint material. And now this car paint material is using the object. And we can, um, we can go to the second one and it is using the same mesh data, but we can also set this to the object. And then we can use uh, the second material here, sponge. So I'm gonna rename this as well to uh, Suzanne sponge. And then we can choose the sponge material. And now we have uh, two objects using the same mesh data, but having different materials. And you can see that if I uh, hide this one, you can see the second one is yellow from that sponge material. So that is working. So now I have to, uh, we have a total of five different materials. So I have to duplicate this three more times. One, this will be the tie dye. And I'm gonna set I'm gonna just find it here. Okay. One more duplicate for the cobblestone material and use that one. And then one final duplicate, Alt D again, uh, using, uh, what is this one? 
The last one is damaged metal. And because we are using, we are assigning the object, uh, sorry, we are assigning the material to the object instead of to the mesh. Now you can see this object has this little material uh, here as well. That's how you can see that. Uh, this was the um, metal. Okay. And we can actually remove all these uh, additional material slots. We don't need those. Um, and that since those material slots were assigned to the mesh, they are gone everywhere now because all these objects are using the same mesh. They are just using different materials. Um, I hope that makes sense. And we can turn off the car paint and then we see uh, the sponge. We can turn off the sponge, then we see a white one, which is probably the tie dye. I can turn that off. So that all works. So we have now. We now have like uh, five different Suzannes with, and the only difference is the material. So what we can do is go back into the object data and we can check the FZ randomizer and we can recalculate the possibilities. And now we have 30 and that's because we have five avatars, three and two. So that's six times five is 30. So that is going well. We are looking to get 75. So the next uh, trait is going to be the hats. And here we only have three. But if you remember the previous tutorial, uh, we had actually five. So we have the cap, beanie, derby, old. That's four. But we also have the, uh, had the option of no hat. And there's a very easy trick to do this, uh, to do this in FC Randomizer by just adding an empty object in here, which doesn't render anything. But uh, FC Randomizer does count it as an option. And we also have to uh, fix this cap uh, because now this cap is not counted as uh, as a variation uh, for the, the hat trait. So let's do that first. Let's fix this cap first. The way to do this is to uh, go into the hats, add an empty. Uh, doesn't really matter what it looks like. And then in the empty object, uh, what's it called? In the object properties, we go into instancing and we want to instance a collection and we can choose the cap collection. And now uh, this is considered an object and it shows the cap. Uh, so that's great. So now we have this cap and this empty and we can pretty much deactivate this cap. This will also save memory in the scene. It will it will make things more efficient. But if we turn this collection off, uh, which is different than hiding and, un, and, and not rendering it, by the way, um, this still keeps the data inside this collection around in the scene. This completely turns it off. But the empty that we have here still shows it. Uh, as you can see, if we move this, it moves with it. So that's great. So we now have this instance of this cap. And I'm just gonna leave the cap inside here uh, because uh, yeah, that's just useful. So we can rename this to cap uh, instance. So now if we go back into the FC randomizer panel, we can recalculate and now we have 40 because we have two times five, which is 10. And then instead of three making 30, we have four objects in here. So we're getting there. Uh, now, how would you show a uh, an option of no hat? That's simply by adding another empty. And it doesn't really matter which uh, shape it has. And we can call this no hat. And now we have this uh, FZ randomizer will consider this as another option, which doesn't show anything. So that's uh, how you do that. And if we now calculate the possibilities, we are at 50. So that's great. We have... Um, 5 times 5 is 25 times 2 is 50. Uh, to make 75, we need three types of glasses, which um, previously we had party, sun, and also the option of no glasses, which simply, if you add an empty inside of the glasses collection, you will see, and we call this no glasses. You will see now, if we calculate possibilities, we have 75. So this is how you set up the scene for FC Randomizer. And um, 
yeah, again, with these materials, there is a fancier way to do it, but um, I like to keep it simple and do it like this. Um, also, this allows us to use something like uh, something called proxy swap, which makes things uh, also a lot more efficient than um, using it the previous way. But I won't go into those details. Um, this is just a simple way to get it done. And um, the next step is to manage the timeline and make sure that on every frame we have a different random variation of our character. Uh, the way to do that is to hit generate. And what happens now is you can see we had we started with uh, a timeline range from 1 to 250. It has changed this from 1 to 10. Now what, why 1 to 10? If you go back into the FZ randomizer panel, you can see we in, in our variance variable, we have 10 and that's why it uses 10. And now it has generated um, 10 different variations on those frames. And if we take a look at those different frames with the arrow keys, you can see that nothing really happens. The way to fix this is simply by turning off your character. And now you see um, something is left and that's because FC Randomizer creates two more collections, one called Variants, which has some proxies and that is what makes uh, the whole thing quite uh, efficient. That's because we have proxy swap uh, turned on. And then we spawn these proxies. And these are just spawned by using um, uh, three empties that have a uh, collection. And inside of that collection, there, there are the uh, objects of this specific um, variation. So all you need to do is generate and then turn off your original character uh, collection. Just turn it off like this. That's the most efficient way to do it. And now if we um, move through the timeline, you can see we have a bunch of different variations. So all we need to do now is change the number of variants to the number we like, in this case, 75, and hit generate again. And as you can see, now we have 75 uh, Suzanne's. And um, when you hit generate, it always turns this uh, character collection on again. So you have to turn that off and then you can see the different variations. Now, one final thing that I uh, want to cover is we can see here on frame 17, we have a blue Suzanne with this uh, black hat and no glasses. And I think somewhere along the line, I saw that that specific variation again. If I'm not mistaken. There we go. Frame 34 is a blue Suzanne, no glasses and this old hat. And I think frame eight is the same one. So there you, you can see um, the, the way FC Randomizer works is it's, it's, it's in the name. It just creates a random variation. Uh, so it, it's like, okay, we need to do 75 variants. Uh, start at one, just create a random one. Pick a random uh, material, a, a random Suzanne object, a random hat and random glasses. And then go to the next one, do the same thing. And this doesn't... Um, assure that every variation will be unique. The way to do that is to hit this unique checkbox. And now there is um, something you need to know about using this is that if you, in, in this case, our total collection is very small. 75 is very small. If you're working with something like 10,000 variants, then you can imagine this can take a while because now instead of just creating a random variant and moving to the next frame, we uh, create, we have created a bunch of variants. Then at frame 10, it's, it's generating a random one. And then it has to look uh, to all the previous ones. Is, has this one been generated before? And maybe you can imagine if we are at frame 74 and we use unique, it means we have 74 unique combinations and we're looking for that last one. And if we're just randomly generating them, there's only a one in 75 chance uh, of hitting that. 
And that's in case of 75, it's not too bad. So it's not really a problem. But if you're doing 10,000, um, then I recommend, the, I think the, the general recommendation is to have at least the double the amount of possibilities. Uh, so in that case, 20,000 possibilities, and then you generate 10,000 unique characters. Um, because then the chances of hitting a unique one is a lot higher. And if you don't do that, if you only have 10,000 possibilities and you want uh, 10,000 unique variants, it might take a while, uh, depending on your uh, specific situation. Uh, but in this case, it's only 75, so it's kind of safe to do this. So if I hit generate now, um, you see it's, it's pretty fast. And again, character is turned on, so let's turn that off. And now we should have uh, 75 unique variations of uh, Suzanne with hats and glasses. So that's how you do this. And we can turn this uh, render collection back on. FC Randomizer is not doing anything outside of this character um, collection. So any, any collection outside of that uh, is just untouched. And that is what we want because it's just the lights, the background and the camera. So if we hit render now, um, we, we can actually render each single variation. And if we render this as an animation by hitting Control F12 or going to render and render animation, in your output settings, it will render out uh, whatever you have set here. So for example, a collection of PNG images. Um, and that's great. And that's all we have to do. So this is how you set up your scene. And um, yeah, this is all looking good. So then you can go to blendergrid.com and you can go to step one where you can upload the blend file. And uh, we can upload this. And uh, that automatically takes us to the projects page where you can actually also uh, upload more projects from here. Um, and uh, there you go, you can uh, see, you can see here I already uh, tested this, but you can see here uh, this uh, uh, this file we just uploaded. You can you can uh, make sure the, the settings are good and then you can calculate the price. I've already done that uh, with this one and then I can uh, go ahead and uh, start rendering this uh, 75 frames 1080 by 1080 13 dollars and uh, it's uh, now starting the render and after a few minutes you can see there is some progress we have two frames rendered let's check them out yeah we're getting every single variation slowly uh, adding up here and uh, at the very end, every PNG file is added to a zip file, which you can then download all at once. Um, alternatively, you can hit this button where it just downloads everything into your default download folder of your browser. Um, but yeah, we can see they are uh, dropping in here. And that's pretty much the workflow. So uh, yeah. Um, little bit different um, than the previous one where we used drivers. In this case, FC Randomizer makes our life a little bit easier if you uh, know how to set up the scene uh, to use it. So yeah, that's the workflow of going from setting up your scene, using FC Randomizer and then rendering your collection. And yeah, I hope this is helpful. I hope this helps you create some amazing creations some amazing collections yourself and uh, i'll see you in the next one take care